Today we're making a platform bed. Here's how I did it. With lumber prices through the roof, I opted to go with poplar as it's still a minimal price and it's a hardwood and it takes stain and paint really well. So it's always a great choice. I'm starting with the joiner, squaring up one side and one face and then moving over to the table saw to cut the size. But if you don't have this machinery for flattening lumber, you can always order your lumber from the sawmill pre-flattened. It's just an extra price. We've been needing to upgrade our bed situation forever. So we got a new mattress in a box. You'll see that here shortly, but let's cut some rails down and double check your measurements as I already messed up one board. Ugh. Always double check. And look at this hardware. This stuff makes installing the bed frames so easy. I've been using it for years and I'll have it linked down in the description box below. For visual purposes, I wanted to show you how these members are gonna be installed on the headboard and side rails, just like this. But let's get on to making the side rail supports. We're gonna use a two by four and cut it down. Wait a minute, I almost forgot. I gotta go back and do my favorite part, sanding. <sighs> let's get that over with. Oops. I found something. Come here. Working with solid wood, you're always gonna have cracks, checks, or splits, but it's okay. Grab yourself some CA glue. It's tinted brown, as it's already gonna be stained brown in the end, so you won't see it. Use a little accelerator spray and clean it up with the sander. Easy peasy, and the cracks will be stabilized. Now we're just gonna do a couple of layout lines for our support rails, and we're gonna get ready to rip them and attach them. Once I verified that the side rail support with my layout line was gonna make sense, I moved on to dividing up the space with spacer blocks as I want my rails equally supported and spaced. I'll have DIY plans for this king size bed in the description box below. If not, they will come shortly as I'm still wrapping up the plans on the Adirondack chairs from last week's video. I used brad nails to temporarily hold this board in place instead of using clamps. Now I'm gonna mark out some recessed holes and attach it with the real support screws. Now I'm gonna make my cuts and attach all the support spacer blocks for the slats. This is a step you don't have to do if you just wanna measure each place out. But over the years I've been making beds and I found this is much easier, especially on the setup. And it structurally makes the bed better as each slat will be evenly spaced and support it. Let's discuss the cost factor. I know you're wondering. So with the poplar, the pine two by fours, the non-mortise hardware, I'm all in for roughly $150. That doesn't count my labor or my time, but cost, it's only a buck 50. How do you beat that? That's amazing, right? If you're gonna build this bed and sell it, you're gonna have huge profit margins. And if you're gonna build it for yourself, you're gonna have this awesome platform bed for 150 bucks roughly and you're only looking at a couple of days worth of work. Let's attach the bed hardware. I like to grab a dummy block. That dummy block is basically gonna be the headboard or the footboard. I put it to the side and use a square to keep me even. I love doing it this way because over the years, I would just start screwing that on and doing it off of measurements on a tape and things would always be slightly off. Doing it this way will ensure a good, strong fit. Once the side rail hardware was complete, I moved on to the footboard and the headboard. It's gonna need a center support. This is gonna serve as the support system for the slats in the middle of the bed. This is so crucial, don't skip this. I've done this before and the two by fours, yes, even two by fours would droop. So you gotta have that center support. You can't get away without it. I cut up some pine two by fours, an inch and a half thick strips, I glued and nailed them together, and then I attached them to the footboard, centering it and being sure to lay out my lines and add glue. Now I'm gonna use a brad nail to tack it and hold it in place, and then come back and permanently screw it down. You'll see what I mean here shortly when we go to assemble the bed. Last year, I had this huge workshop. It was almost 3,000 square feet. I had a lot of table space, but now with my space being a two-car garage, I gotta get creative. So I'm using my table saw and my outfeed table just to assemble this bed rail and support system together. It's kind of tricky, but I was able to clamp it down and make it work. 
I know what you're thinking. Installing the hardware like this is not necessary. And you're right. You don't have to set up the whole bed across all these tables and saws to make it happen. You could just measure where the hardware goes and install it. But I promise you, you will make a mistake somewhere along the lines. I've done it and this is how I do it now and it's just a foolproof method. Now designing the legs, I wanted them to be kind of modern yet rustic, so I just went with a simple edge. You'll see just like this. Here's one leg and here's another. Each board is gonna yield me two legs. And I'm going over to my bandsaw because it's quick and efficient, but you could simply use a jigsaw and you could even make a jig for your table saw to get this accurate. But this method is what I'm doing for today. I know what you're thinking, these legs won't be accurate. And you're right. So I'm gonna clamp them down on my table and it's gonna have these little lips. These are the discrepancies, so to speak. So I grabbed a block plane and I just started flattening it out. It took me about a minute and each leg was absolutely identical. You could also use a template and a flush trim bit or you could use a hand sander on like 60 grit. Either way, all these methods work. After determining my exact spot for leg placement, I applied a little glue and used these three inch lag screws. They're super strong and supportive and that's what's gonna hold the bed frame up. Came out nice. Let's add a little stain and off camera, I sealed this with some sealer, but you know what? I forgot to turn the camera on and you know, it happens. I'm a maker, not a filmmaker. Well, I guess I am a filmmaker, aren't I? Hmm. Never looked at it that way. Let's cut some bed slats and move on up to the bedroom. Well, that sounded funny. Go to the bedroom? Anyway, let's install this bed. There's the angled member. That's on the footboard and headboard. There's the flat member. Those are on the side rails. You got your slat spacers, your center support, and hey, there's a leg. All right, using my wife, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing assembled. The poplar boards are pretty heavy as they were two inch thick, so I had to enlist the help of my pretty wife for her support. And my son wanted to jump in, handed me a rubber mallet for that extra boom, boom, boom. Gosh, using this non-mortise hardware is a dream. I love using it. I use it on all my bed builds. It makes assembly and deassembly easy. Now, let's move on to that middle support. I promised I'd show it. Here it is. It's just a two by four ripped down to an inch and a half thick with a center support. And then let's just place these slats in. Easy alignment since I got the block spacers already in place. This thing is looking great for 150 bucks and a couple of days worth of work. Now my son is dying to walk the plank to do the test, the support test. So here it is, I'm gonna let him do it. And then we're gonna install this bed or the bed in a box. Go, Jax. You got this, buddy. Boom. Boom. Mattresses have came a long ways. You know, you used to go to the mattress store and go buy one. It was such a pain in the butt, right? You had to get a trailer or a truck, and then you had to get a box spring. What a pain in the keister. Now you can basically just order a mattress in a box. It's super supportive, very comfortable, and it's just delivered to your home in a couple of days. Like, geez, it's so easy. We're going to open up the shrink wrap after we flip the bed upside down and inside out. And then it's just gonna expand all on its own. It expands in about 30 seconds and over the course of 24 hours, it fully expands. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this bed is amazing. And you can believe it when I say it's amazing. I have a bad neck injury. So my neck and my back always hurts and I wake up feeling refreshed and ready to go. I love this. If you wanna help me out, please be sure to share this video. So instead of asking you to subscribe, help me out and share it. All right, I'll see you next time.